Hold up, players! Subscribe! What up, players? It's War Boss Tay up in this mud. Welcome to the War Boss and Lady Boss Late Night Show, Episode One. Today, I'm sitting here with the Lady Boss. Hello. Hello. And we are going to talk about some things, give our thoughts and opinions. General nonsense. General nonsense to keep you company while you are painting your miniatures. All right, first thing, announcements. War Boss Tay July Painting Challenge. July is coming up, and you know what that means. My yearly painting challenge is getting ready to go. So I think there are some other people in the YouTube community that are doing uh, July projects as well. So I suggest you guys um, do as much as you can. Join up with everybody, and let's just keep the community going, going strong, vibrant, awesome. Uh, the July Painting Challenge, for those of you who don't know, is that it's a month-long challenge where we kind of throw it out to the community that we uh, challenge you to do a little bit of hobby every single day and uh, record what you do, even if it's nothing, even if you just sit on your behind and watch TV or play, play uh, Watch Dogs all day and you don't do anything. <coughs> <laughs> or you take your beautiful girlfriend out to dinner and a movie. Oh, how's that for a thought? That's a good thought. Just record every single day. Um, so it's a month of hobbying where you record a video every single day and p put it up on YouTube and we kind of track each other's progress, which is kind of how month-long projects go anyways, but it's a, a month-long dedicated hobbying challenge. I call it a challenge because it's not a competition. There's no huge prize other than uh, growing the community and taking part in something where you can hopefully get your models up and painted. All right, so that's coming up. Stay tuned for more information on that through YouTube. Uh, other announcements, Forge World now accepts PayPal. Oh my gosh, before it used to only um, accept, I guess, credit cards and uh, other, other, other kinds of transactions like that. And where we are, my, my credit card, company, my debit card company, didn't didn't like Forge World, didn't like anything overseas. They thought it was shady business, so they wouldn't they wouldn't let me. I think uh, my lady boss friend tried to order something once, and they didn't they shut down your card or something? Yeah, they did. I had to call the company and get a new one she had, reissued. She had to get a new, a new credit card reissued? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Good. Googly moogly. So now they're, they finally come into the 21st century, out of the dark ages, and they're using PayPal now. So uh, that means I have to keep an even um, s stronger willpower hold over my wallet. And luckily I haven't ordered anything yet and uh, the lady boss is going to temper me and keep me from um, spending what I own <laughs> and selling, selling everything I have to buy more Forge World goodies. Okay, uh, so that's, that's all I have, general announcements. There's nothing really, I mean this is just kind of whipped up at the last second. but. Um, we're also getting ready to launch a full-scale commission painting service. What's that about? It's going to be kind of crazy because I'm one person, but I've got a little bit more time on my hands now that it's summertime, so stay tuned for details. If you uh, enjoy my videos and follow me on YouTube and would like a War Boss Tay uh, personal commission, then I will um, get you updated on what that's going to entail. Yeah. It's happening. It is happening, and uh, I've, luckily I've got a, a much smarter, much more intelligent um, person behind the, the wheel doing all of the paperwork and the secretarial stuff because uh, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of useless when it comes to that kind of stuff. I just want to paint, and so uh, the lady boss is going to make sure that everything is on the up and up and legit. And she's also getting into photography, so we'll be putting up a website and um, taking high quality pictures and uh, it's going to be real legit. It's going to be awesome. Um, we're going to try to hopefully stick to it as a business venture. And for all of those out, out there who have tried commission painting and um, and stuff like that, we want to have a good positive experience and personable, friendly, transparent. I've got some commission contracts right now that I'm going through. So um, yeah, we're just going to try to see if we can make a business of it. Okay. So I thought, to, I thought for our first episode of this weird little late night show, the lady boss and I could talk a little about a little bit about the the hobby itself, from 
an outsider's perspective from somebody who is never um who's never done it or maybe i'm talking about spouses girlfriends wives people who've had the hobby just kind of sprung up on them and uh now have to deal with us hobbyists and gamers um taking up all their space yeah i've learned to just embrace it because it's it's not going to go away so i guess that's why we have Orbaste Studios now. Orbastestudios.com. That's not a real website yet, but maybe it will be one day. Um, so, 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 what do you? <laughs> I guess I, I guess what the best way to phrase it would be is, um, what do you think is the uh, biggest thing to to uh, keep in mind when uh, for for the wives or girlfriends out there who happen to be listening to this while their their husband or boyfriend is painting what's the what's the main thing to keep in mind when having to live with uh, a gamer <laughs> oh gosh I don't know where do I start uh, let's see I think just balancing time or or encouraging your significant other to to manage their time between everything so they don't neglect everything else completely for for the Warhammer. Yeah, and for you gamers out there, don't neglect your girlfriends and spend lots of time on your wives and make sure you balance your time between the hobby and stuff that has to get done, right? Right. Right. Like dinners and movies <laughs> and No, I mean it's I'm interested, I think. I think so. I think it's it, it is very interesting. I just don't know anything about it, so I trying to get into it. It's just so overwhelming, and it's I don't know where to begin. So I think if I just like when you got into it, did did you know like where to start and like just the whole backstory? I didn't know there was that on top of the gaming, on top of the painting. Like, there's so many different entities to the Warhammer hobby, so. It just, I mean, being around you so much and just hearing your videos and seeing what you do, I, I get it now, but there's still so much I feel I couldn't even begin to comprehend, so. Yeah, and that's kind of what this show is about. I think it's um, not only for us jaded veteran um, gamers who've been in the hobby for like decades and decades, but also as a intro or primer to um, our girlfriends and our wives out there who kind of have to put up with us and maybe if they were interested but didn't know how to uh, ask you about it or, or just couldn't understand it we want to make it like accessible because the hobby is kind of a niche thing you know it's like not and it's geared for for males i mean yeah there's not like unicorns and fairy models or i know and if they things. if they are they they have to be all like mean sexy. yeah they have to be I mean, gritty mind, and as dark long as they're and they're sexy but they're kind of ugh. <laughs> yeah okay so i guess that brings us to the theme of the the hobby the warhammer f fantasy and 40k the whole um I guess the theme of it is that it's a fantasy or science fiction setting, but unlike Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or um, other really popular genres, which I love, which yeah, we, which so many people know. Like we grew up with, you know, the, the Hobbit and um, reading it in school. For those of us who are older and remember before the movies came out, and um, yeah, fantastical adventures like Star Wars. It was always mm -hmm. yeah, like like grand adventure out in space, right? But the whole setting for Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer 40k is grim and dark and it, it hasn't always been like this. It used to be a little bit more high fantasy but uh, over the last couple of decades since the 90s I think they've gone and they said no you know what our our system, our universe, our fiction has to be about hopelessness and um, darkness and that humanity is uh, on the decline and that the, everything in the world or everything in the universe wants to eat us or kill us <laughs> or destroy us or possess and um, take over our bodies and um, wow. yeah it's th the whole setting is grim dark and um, it must appeal to you yeah. I think it appeals to people because it's um, it's where where other universes are more uh, they can they can I mean even Warhammer and 40k can be lighthearted I think the appeal is that against all these odds stacked against humans 
the the regular human is just lives a life of hopelessness in this kind of fascist uh, empire. Like there's no democracy in uh, the empire or or the 40k universe. It's it's like how how do you overcome that and how do you find uh, a little bit of of I guess vindication or um, uh, how do you survive it or how do you put up with it and that, I think that's what appeals to people um, I guess because it's the only it's the only universe that's like that I mean every other kind of fictional setting I think now with Game of Thrones coming out it's it's a little bit more um, like the kind of dark and like more hopeless kind of setting is more uh, in the in 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 the what am I trying to say like in the focus but yeah, I guess that's that's what the the appeal in the '90s and in the 2000s was, and that's that's why they try so hard to say uh, things used to be good, the universe used to be awesome, and humanity used to be the masters of the universe or the um, the you know the on on the uprise in the fantasy setting. But all this stuff happened. Humanity's pride and um, uh, the the infallib uh, the, the fallibility of the human spirit and stuff has caused it to kind of stagnate and now we're just like waiting to die and get eaten and and all this horrible stuff i mean i don't know does that i guess i guess that has to appeal to a certain i guess mindset oh i don't know i mean anything in moderation i i could see but if that's like it's constant i feel like it's just an overload of that always yeah like there's there's no room for for someone like me to come in and find something yeah glamorous that's, about it i don't know that's why there is no yeah there there's no real like romanticism about it it's it's mm, no yeah. you, there's no high adventure you can't really i mean there's there's certain you know extenuating circumstances but like it's a it's a it's a universe where you know you're just you if you think if you if i live there i would be one of uh, countless millions or billions other people and it's it's basically it boils down to your life doesn't matter nothing you do is going to affect anything on a large scale and um you're you're probably going to get eaten or squashed or mutilated and uh, nothing you do matters Depressing. yeah it is I'm, I'm trying to think of other is there anything like fiction that kind of is is like that we're stuck in kind of a very dictatorial fascist kind of society where there's no hope and the individual doesn't matter and they just kind of live this horrible existence and I mean philosophy more yeah okay. we're eating watermelon chunks if you guys hear us slurping anything because <laughs> um, it's summertime and watermelon is and it's so hot here yeah it's pretty hot <laughs> here at night in Hawaii Watermelon. <laughs> okay, so back on track. Back on track. The fictional setting. If you're an outsider, the fictional setting is different from any other um, kind of universe in that everything is kind of stacked against humanity from the very beginning, and um, so so no matter what kind of source you find in the fiction, that's kind of where where it is. And so I guess it's. I mean, are there are there heroes? Are there oh, archetypes? Yeah. Are there you know traditional mm -hmm. storytelling? Yeah, there's there there are there are there are heroes in in you know all facets of the universe. Mostly though, the heroes either go unsung or mm. um, people don't recognize them or they don't do they don't do much or but um, it's it's like how does courage and bravery and heroism survive in this kind of setting against you know insurmountable odds usually the heroes people who act in a good way usually get betrayed because they're too trusting or they're um or they get placed in a bad situation because other people think that they're that they have ulterior motives so um i mean there's this great book that i read where one of the heroes uh, is just trying to make her um the book is called mechanicum and she's just trying to make her work a little bit easier by kind of altering her her laptop and making it work more efficiently and um because of that the her boss says thinks that she's trying to uh corrupt the machinery and and um think have free will and free thought so he sentences her to be executed because she wanted to be more efficient at her job and i, I think that's kind of like the overall theme is that 
everyone wants you to be depressed and everyone wants it to stay dark and grim and hopeless and then it's the challenge of the individual to overcome that with heroism and bravery and um, and like positivity I guess so is there gosh like a timeline that that I could just see everything kind of just to understand the universe and, and 40k and fantasy or you said that's another dimension or universe in itself or just all the different categories I, I'm just totally lost yeah 40k and fantasy are separated kind of like I, mean, I hate to draw this comparison, but Star Wars and Star Trek are are different universes, right. or maybe like Star Trek and I don't know something else that has to do with no, humanity on Earth. Yeah, so yeah. so even though they share the same name and a, a lot of similar uh, races, yeah, it's uh, it's separate universes. Okay. Um, but yeah, going back to your question, there's no real timeline per se. There are lots of websites that kind of chronologically order events and stuff but the, the universe is so uh, rich with stories and background and stuff that That's happens. That's what I feel and I f don't think there... Is there any condensed version of, of uh, love? Yeah, the, the, the rule books, I guess, are the, are the best. Aren't those all numbers and having to do with game? game oh, um, you're talking about rules? Oh. Yeah, in, in the back of the rule books, usually, I mean, th this new rule book for 40k has a uh, has a book kind of just dedicated to the fluff and I'm glad you used that word because fluff is uh, fluff means basically fiction for those of you who don't know what fluff is um, but yeah if you I think most of the rule books would have the rules in the front and then the fluff in the back okay uh, but yeah it, it's hard because for those of us who've read more books or who've who've had been in the hobby for a long time, you know, we'll read a little side note in one of these condensed rule books, condensed versions in the rule books, and we'll think like, oh, that's not how it went at all, or oh, there's so much more to it than that, and they're not even getting into this, the, the meat of the, the story, but I guess it's hard to when you're trying to condense everything. But yeah, I think the rule books are a great place to start in the uh, fluff section. Usually there's a timeline in most rule books or most army books or codexes, and, um, for for gamers out there who are trying to get your uh, your significant others or or people that you know friends and family into the hobby, the rule book would be a good place to start if they want to know a condensed uh, but pretty still fleshed out history timeline. I guess right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay. So 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 the fiction aside, knowing what the fiction is, okay. uh, there's the hobby side, right? There's well let, let let's let's keep the hobby for the last since I'm kind of really into the hobby side and there's <laughs> there's the fiction the background the I mean they they have a whole publishing arm of Games Workshop called the Black Library where they have writers who might not necessarily even be gamers but just write books on on the stories and then they have the the game itself the rules and uh, the figures and um, tournaments and I mean, there's a there's this event called Games Day and Games Night at our local hobby store, where they all come out and everybody plays and um, tries to tries to f test out their, their their newest armies against everybody else. And I think that's fun because then you can you know you see it all on the table in front of you. I mean, given that they've taken the time to actually paint up their models, then I don't know. It's, it's something to watch. It's a spectacle, and I just yeah. I like it. Yeah, I agree. Um, There's a social aspect of yeah. the game, right? Because whereas you could play, you, you could spend money on, you know, a PS4 and a video game, and just sit in your room all day. Um, the, the 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 game. I mean, Warhammer. Eventually, you, you could spend all your time painting, shut up in your in your room. But eventually, you're gonna have to play a game, or you, you don't have to. But I mean, that's that's kind of what it's about, right? C building a community and playing the game with other people. Um, yeah, so, so, and then there's the hobby side. So the painting, the converting, the, um, building bases and, uh, and for that itself too, there's like competitions and you've got websites like cool mini or not, um, people out there trying to build commission painting services or that have businesses that paint, uh, people's armies or models. 
and I think I've you know, wrapped my head around that part of it the most, just because of you know how much you paint and how involved you are on that yeah. side of the hobby. So. <laughs> I mean, and and there's like I've never went to an art school or I've never taken really taken like art classes, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, that ever since I st the thing is when I started the hobby, I just wanted to play the game. Like I really loved orcs and goblins, and I thought it was the idea of orcs riding pigs and little goblins riding spiders and charging across the field. I I I had so much fun just like playing the game and trying to meet new people and playing the game with them that uh, I, I didn't have any, hardly any of my guys were painted. They were all like metal and plastic. I didn't even primer them back then. And um, yeah, and now I can't stand seeing anything of mine unpainted. Like ever since I took a break and came back to the hobby, I just want to paint all of my stuff. Like I hate showing up places with unpainted armies or figures. Shame. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, do, do you think that's uh, indicative of anything? Like I, I find, well, I mean, I find that when I, from my experience looking around, like most of the younger kids or, you know, teenagers or guys in their early 20s don't really care about having painted stuff. I mean, it's, it's a time thing also. I mean, all the time you spend painting, it's, it's a whole other thing to get into. Yeah, yeah. And then some people just maybe aren't adept to do it so oh yeah yeah i mean it's, it's hard i mean even i have a it's tricky they're, they're so small i just can't get over how you paint little eyeballs on these yeah bitty figures so and yeah and that's not to say that um that you should ever want to be you know like me and just want to paint all your stuff like i think i don't i don't know I guess there's just something about painting, the painting side of it, that I enjoy more than I did when I was a kid. Well, you've gotten a lot better at it, too. So. That's true. When you're a kid, you know, you're not, <laughs> maybe you're not that great. I, I wasn't that great. I had terrible hand-eye coordination and all my stuff looked horrible. It was, it was pretty bad. I should, I should dig up some old models and show them. <laughs> okay, so those are the three sides for, for you beginners of the hobby that are the most, I think, um, engrossing, engaging. If you're dating or friends with or a family member with a gamer uh, who's into Warhammer or the, the miniatures games hobby, you've got the fiction, the background. Uh, like I've got on my phone, on my iPad, I've got so many books downloaded because I've found that having electronic versions of the books is easier to carry around than, you know, so many, so many paperback or hardback novels. You've got the game itself where people who are competitive gamers are constantly trying to have the best armies and be the best players in, in their area or in the country or in the world. And then you've got the hobby side, which is painting, uh, building, converting, kit bashing. And uh, depending on who your gamer in your life is, any one of those could be uh, the most important thing for them. So if, say, Christmas or a birthday is coming up, and you're going shopping and you're thinking you might want to, uh, you know, get a little something for the gamer in your life, you might want to ask them or talk to them about the hobby and see which part of it they like. Because everybody's different. You know, if I was uh, different and I was really competitive about the gaming, maybe I'd only want one or two different things. Um, but, you know, specific things about the hobby, which ones do, uh, do you find the most enjoyable? I mean, that's a good... I think that's a good conversation to have, right? You don't want to get like the wrong thing. Yeah, gives you ideas for Christmas and birthdays and <laughs> cover all your holidays for the year. I think you should just make a list of everything you want and I can pick from it <laughs> at different times. That's a great idea. Okay, gamers, make a list for your significant others and family members. Just give it to them as like a wish list and uh, let them surprise you when they want, if you're good. You do all your chores and you yes. dinner and movies chores and also. shopping. Also, um, are we talking about space please, now? <laughs> please try to keep your painting areas and gaming areas clean. So that's right. Some guys who have <laughs> houses I've seen on YouTube have like a whole room to themselves that where they just set up their stuff and, and some I people call it why. a garage. Yeah. Some some guys like I know uh, one of my friends who I sometimes I go over to his house. Uh, to play 
Um, I used to do a lot more when I had more time, but his garage is, is you know, crammed full of boxes with Warhammer stuff in it, and he's also got a painting room. Um, I mean, you think my clothes, shoes, and makeup take up space. My goodness, do Warhammers take up space? How is that possible? There's they do. There's so much stuff. There's so much stuff. Oh my gosh, boxes and models and books and... Uh, yeah, it's... it's never ending. Space management um, is, is something that that all gamers should be cognizant about. Okay, uh, what else did I want to talk about? It looks like we've got a pretty good-sized show so far. Yeah, I'm just, just talking. Okay, so um, since this is kind of like a beginner's episode, or, or an episode that's beginner-friendly, I wanted to talk also about the Games Workshop website. So what I've got now <laughs> is... Beginner-friendly. Yeah, beginner-friendly. So, so I'm bringing up on my laptop the Games Workshop website, and uh, this is kind of for Games Workshop. As uh, my my lady boss here is, you know, not someone who frequents the website, but might want to um, one day order something online or just kind of navigate around. I want you to try and navigate this website and see if it's easy to find stuff or easy to order it. Hmm. So we're on the we're on the main web page, the, the main page right now, and um, let's kind of go through the steps of what, what you're doing and how well it's working out for you. All right, well... Or how about this? Why don't I tell you... Hunt, tell me. Yeah, why don't I, I tell you... you. Let's say on my list, I said, I want for um, my upcoming birthday in July, let's say I want a new Space Marine Commander. Okay. And that's all I said. And, and you have oh, nothing to go on, gosh. but Space Marine Commander, that's really what I want. Love to have a Space Marine Commander box set. So, I would assume it's uh, 40k? Am I wrong? No, yeah, that's right. Space Marines, right? Yeah, so she just clicked on the 40, Warhammer 40k tab. Let's see, what's, what's new? New releases? Let's see. Bestsellers? No. Let's hmm. Uh, armies, I would go to armies. I okay, think. so let's. Is that right? So we're gonna click on that. <laughs> okay, and oh my, space marines. Yep. Hundred sixty-three. Okay, so she just opened up the armies tab and she clicked on space marines. All right, so now we're looking at all the space marines, and you said commander, right? Right. So now there's a command squad, and there's a commander in that, I assume, this guy? Um, no. I, I don't know. Yeah, so so if I wasn't here and you're just looking on your own, are you having a... Oh my goodness. Like, what kind of experience are you having? I think you're going to have to be more specific in the descriptions. <laughs> I, I guess so. I, I think guess it's so. fine. I think it's easy to navigate. I mean, it's broken down, like any website. And girls shop online all the time. <laughs> so... It's broken down into categories, and then within those, um, whatever, 40k, what's this, Hobbit, and just Warhammers, mm -hmm. got on the left here, right, all the, the different armies, or right. troops, infantry, vehicles, all that stuff, codexes, right, I can see books, and I think it's fine, I think... You just need to tell me specifically what. I'm what if you um try type uh, in the product search? Oh yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know I don't how specific know, that is. It. Um, what was it? Uh, say I told you Space Marine Commander. Uh, let's see if what comes up. Okay, oh. Here yeah. Okay, so that's pretty intuitive. Huh. There you go, Space Marine. Commander, and that's the, yeah, that's the kit. Okay, so the one you're talking about. They, that actually, yeah, that is, that is, yeah. All right, so for anybody, <laughs> no, I feel silly. no, that's okay because I'm I was. Scared. That's kind of how I did it too. I mean, I would, I would click on the tab, whatever the game was. That's the tab I would click on, like the Warhammer 40k tab, and then you'd have to look. Okay, what am I looking for? I'm looking for Space Marines. So how would I find Space Marines? I'd go to Warhammer 40,000 Armies. Click on that. Find Space Marines. And and then even when you get to the army that you want, like Space Marines, you are 
I'm gonna have to dig through what is that a hundred how much 63 yeah 163 good googly moogly 163 things that's 14 pages of products to find what you're looking for so um, kudos to you games workshop you've got the product search right at the top if uh, I mean I mean if 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 there was like a little pop-up window or something that that kind of said is this your first time find something with whatever you want but use the product search like right at the beginning that that might help but yes. but you are saying though that as a as a like total outsider to the hobby it's it's okay to navigate the website I'd say yeah it's pretty straightforward yeah okay all right well there you go no complaints yet there you go and uh, assuming they don't ask for you know the blood of your firstborn child for payment or whatever and that the, the payment goes through pretty easily I mean the Games Workshop website uses PayPal which is which is great it's awesome uh, PayPal is super easy to use very intuitive so um, there's there's that or you could pay by credit card or all sorts of ways okay Games Workshop website done with that uh, as a as a woman the last topic I want to talk about is the similarities between Warhammer and makeup. Painting Warhammer figures and makeup. Oh. <laughs> so what did I say? Where did we go? I came home from Sephora one day, right? Right. What did I tell you? I got my, yeah. my bases. <laughs> yeah, we went shopping one day. She said she got she got new brushes. <laughs> And she got she got base coats and highlights and I was and I was like that's and, that's, primers. and primers and I said yeah that's the stuff that I get when I go shopping for paints. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I know when I paint, say I've got a new model that I'm ready to paint, you know, I primer it, and then I base coat it, and then I I shade it, and then I highlight it, and then it's ready to go. Is that kind of the the, the process for putting on makeup in the morning? In a nutshell, I guess so. Yeah, I always ask you all the time, what are you doing? I say painting, and then when I'm in the bathroom getting ready. Yeah, I'll say, what are you doing? Painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there you have it. Sometimes it takes me like two, three days, maybe a whole week to paint an entire figure wow. up. One figure, and uh, the lady boss does it. At least it doesn't take me that long. Yeah, it, at, <laughs> thank goodness it doesn't take her that long. Or else <laughs> Three days. We'd be late to everything. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, so to wrap up the show, um, let's do some non-Warhammer, non-hobby related talk. Is In other news, what, what have we been watching? We've been watching movies or TV shows or... Uh, what did we see last? Melissifants? <laughs> we saw Melissifants starring Angelina Jolie. Right? Did we see anything after that? That was the last thing we saw, right? Oh, gosh. No, we saw something else. Oh, Are you sure? A uh, Hundred Ways to Die. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Seth MacFarlane's. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. We, okay, so so let's let's give a uh, let's let's give little little thumbs up thumbs down reviews for both. Uh, Mephilicence. <laughs> I give it a thumbs uh, up. I thought I had a good time. Yeah. Overall. I kind of wish they, they stuck a little bit truer to the original cartoon, yeah, Sleeping Beauty. As did I. They didn't even she she didn't even sing. Sleeping Beauty didn't even sing when the prince appeared, and they 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 set the whole thing up that it's not the same story that you heard when you were yeah, growing up. Through the prince character out the window. Yeah, the prince character kind of gets gets uh gets a backseat and tossed out. Yeah, it's kind of like. So. Yeah, that's that's why it's not called Sleeping Beauty. It's True. Miss Elephants, and she just Sleeping Beauty just happens to be there, but they, I, they covered their ground. I mean, I don't think they. You know. Yeah, and you know what? I wasn't expecting the whole angle of the that kind of mother figure. Like, I wasn't expecting the story to go that way. From the trailers and everything, you kind of get that she's just kind of evil throughout. And I I understand they were trying to make her a sympathetic character from the beginning, but the the whole uh, tragic mother story was mother figure story was something I thought was an interesting take. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what, what do you think they could have done better? Oh gosh. Um, I wish I were more fresh in my head now. 
Yeah, we saw it a while ago. Yeah. I guess the, the relationship between... The love story between her and the king. Oh, yeah. It kind of just fell flat. Yeah, it didn't really... Nothing kind of happened after the, the throne room scene with the baby, yeah? That's kind of like the last time we see them. And everything after that is just they hate each other. Mm-hmm. Or he hates her, and... Yeah. Yeah, that that's a good good opportunity for more storytelling. Mm-hmm. I thought because that's an interesting story. I think so. I think, and that's her story. Yeah, so then. and then you kind of wonder: Did he really like? How much did he love her? And then, of course, he got greedy, and and um and and kind of his human nature kind of took over. And uh, t- uh, but you know, I I kind of wonder: Did he still like? How long did he love her? Did he still have feelings for her? And that yeah. would have been much more interesting. Yeah, but they both did till the end. Yeah, not to spoil anything, you guys, but there's the, <laughs> the king. The king character, played by Charlotte Copley, uh, I, I I wish was I wish was a little bit more fleshed out. I wish there was a little bit more to that storyline. Yeah. More romance. Okay, uh, a hun- uh, thousand million. Thousand uh, ways to die. How many ways to yeah. die? Okay. A, lot of ways to die in the West. a bunch of ways to die in the Wild West. Yeah. Well, we both agreed we didn't aren't big fans of the writing. Yeah, the writing fell kind of flat. Um, I was trying too hard, almost. Yeah, I mean, you've got people like you've had like Liam Neeson's, and (laughs) what's what's that other girl's name? Charlize (laughs) Theron, and they played it straight. Neil Patrick Harris was kind of silly and goofy, like his the whole time he was goofy. And yet you have like Neil, pa- uh, Neil Patrick, like Liam Neeson and Charlie Theron that are kind of playing as if it were a legit movie, right? Yeah. And you've got Neil Patrick Harris being the uh, ho 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 gentleman character, and then yeah, Seth MacFarlane was kind of just totally out of place. I think his mm-hmm. his acting was really like I'm a twentieth twenty first century guy stuck in a movie about the Wild West and. And this is kind of how I'm going to talk because this is, you know, the who I am in real life and then trying to identify with the crowd. Yeah, I don't know. Who do you think could have played that main character besides him? Oh, my goodness. Oh, gosh. What's his name? He's in that movie with, uh, oh, gosh, with uh, Cameron Diaz. Oh, Jason Segel. Do you think? Yeah, Jason Siegel might have been he's funny. Kind of goofy he's kind of goofy, dog. everyman. Yeah, yeah kind of schlumpy. Not really the hero character. Because Seth, Seth MacFarlane in the in the in the, in the show is not. Yeah, he's not like the sheriff. He's not like a gunfighter. He's just a farmer guy, right? Sheep herder. Sheep sheep farmer. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, Jason Siegel would have been great. Yeah. I think. Okay, so <laughs> so million dies, ways to die in the West. Uh, there were a couple funny moments. A yeah, couple. There were. There were a couple were. funny jokes where we laughed, but overall, I think it's a, it's a meh. Did you talk about Grand Budapest? No, Grand Budapest Hotel. So that was a while ago, but I think that was our. We agree that was our. Yeah, that's our favorite. movie pick of the last. Six months. <laughs> last six months, yeah. So far, have we seen a better movie this year? This year, what are we in? You know, nothing comes to mind. And not like we've had time to see movies. So yeah, that's not, that's true. It's not really fair. We haven't seen enough to really make that call. So there you have it, you guys. Uh, Wes Anderson's Grand Budapest Hotel has been named by the War Boss and Lady Boss as the movie of 2014 as of <laughs> June, what is it, 9th, 10th? Mm-hmm. We've still got half a year to go, <laughs> but uh, we love that movie. Great style, great writing, great acting, great performances, great mm-hmm. direction. Yeah. Overall, uh, we really liked it. So check that out. And yeah, that's it. So we'll see how many views and how many comments and what whatever kind of response we get from this episode. But uh, thank you, you guys, for watching and listening. There's not really anything to watch. I'll post up some pictures, I guess. But um, yeah, let us know if you like this kind of format. The late night show happens when we're both bored and happen to be up at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and uh, we'll see if this get, ever gets an episode two. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Latest players. Latest players. What up, players? Subscribe.